Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to scan this. And this is the first time I'm going to be scanning this. This is the course, the, the Hulk sculpture is just completed. And I got my Creality 3D scanner here. And I am going to get started. I bought this computer because I needed a more powerful computer to handle this because using 3D software just takes up so much energy. First thing it asks you is hand scan or table mode. We're going to do the hand scan and set up my workspace. So on the screen you have your image here and this is where you're going to be scanning the object. There's a little preview window that pops up here but the important thing to have to look is the slam mode. Uh, basically you want to switch that from texture to geometry. We're only concentrating on that because we want to do 3D printing. And the frame rate, I'm actually going to put it on low because often the higher the polygonal count, the more processing power you need. And I like to go slower and scan things. We'll also try one with a high poly count, that way we can see the difference. So once you set that up, you can go ahead and grab your scanner and hit scan which is right here and hopefully this is going to work sometimes you have to get more than a few if you look at the monitor you'll start to see a preview window i'm going to try and go for the head first notice the distance i'm holding it from the 3d uh, sculpture but you can start to see that it is scanning i'm at the head and i'm moving pretty slow using the the high version you can move faster but you want to keep it like about this distance and now i'm getting the arm if you look at the preview window it's actually facing a very different direction it's horizontal instead of vertical which is not what i wanted and now I might actually have to have this in there. So here we go. As I am moving and scanning, it's kind of like moving up. And you're going to have to like get down here, scan some of the things. There's the arm. I'm trying not to get in the light too much, but it is capturing it fairly easy. Normally with something that's this color, it's a little bit more difficult. So I'm gonna try and scan looking up. This of course uses LiDAR as a technology to capture. Okay. Uh, try not to move too fast and I'm gonna move here I'm gonna cross over the light unfortunately tracking loss as you can see I'm gonna move here where it was and then slowly target out of sight yeah that makes sense you have to go pretty slow here target out of sight maybe move up here to the head It is a little time consuming to do it correctly. And you know, I'm seeing a crack on my sculpture that I didn't notice before. That's where I dug in using the tool to scoop out the torso. I'll show you guys in a minute. But it should be okay. Okay, now let's move to the front here tracking loss when you move kind of fast then that happens getting details of the foot now when you move the cable it's got a very long cable enough to do the details here but you're gonna have to kind of like move it let's see if I can get the details and I think we're ready uh, I'm just gonna rotate a bit here a little bit inside the arm, the bicep, and just get a little bit here. Sometimes like it's missing parts that I've already scanned, which is 
a little bit strange, but you just run it a little bit and it'll come right back. Okay, we're ready to hit stop. And now, it's gonna generate data. So as you can see, you got the sculpture here, and now you hit end, and it's processing scan data. It takes a while. If I was using my old computer, this would take literally an hour, and sometimes it would crash. This computer is a whole lot faster, and it requires a lot of processing power, so right now it's gonna take some time. Run through this, and then there's another step that I'll show you. Time to look at our model really quick to see if this is a good enough. It's missing a little bit of the detail inside the hand, but I think that's gonna be fine because it'll be able to cover that up. But the major parts, let's see, look around. Missing a little bit of the back of the cab, but I think that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and process, and then it's gonna give me a thing to simplify the faces, and now it's gonna take a little bit of time. So now at this screen, kind of move it around, look at it a little bit uh, better, and then hit next. And now this is the part that's gonna take a little bit more time. In this phase, it's gonna process it. This usually takes a little bit more time than the initial um, session, and it's gonna fuse, remove noise, repair, simplify, and it's gonna add texture mapping to the model. Okay, at this point, you're gonna get an option for export, I'm going to do that and I'm going to call this Hulk Low Poly and save it. So that's the first scan. The next scan I'm going to do is going to be a high poly or a frame rate that's going to be higher. It's going to capture much more detail and it uses a lot more processing power. So we're going to check it out. We are going to be scanning this one. This is, of course, the Battlefield 5, it's a little bit messier, but we're gonna try it anyway. All right, let's start the scanning of this. I have a light here, I'm gonna shine it on just for some clarity, and then I'm gonna hit scan. We're gonna try it on low. This is the Creality Lizard, so usually it gives you a countdown. I'll start at the head, and if you look at the monitor, it is horizontal. For some reason, I can't ever orient it well, but I'm going to start at the head and we're just going to work down and notice the distance. You want to keep it at about 250 to 300 millimeters away from the model or centimeters. I'm just going to come back up. This sort of clay, the oil-based clay, is a little bit harder to scan because it's darker. There we go, just right, rotate over here, hopefully. Look at this, it did not save the third leg. It's missing a little bit of the gun. But I think that's a pretty decent scan. So what I'm gonna do now is process. Processing, it's going to work the object and fill in the gaps. And, you know, like, I don't understand a lot of this stuff about the software, but it sh this was not that high of poly, which is interesting because I thought this would be a more complex sculpture than the Hulk. The Hulk ended up being a much more complex one. All right, so this one's done. I'm gonna export it. Well guys, I pretty much scanned the Battlefield 5 sculpture and so far it looks pretty decent. Uh, if you like look around, there's a couple of parts missing here and there, but nothing particularly egregious, nothing that you really can't fix in a 3D program. You can see that it has the metal armature 
But from this, you should be able to like modify it and get a printout. Now the, the big question is, can you print it out this big? And the answer is no, because the 3D printer I have is much smaller. The print area is about this big, but you could make a pretty decent sized replica. Also, this is gonna use a lot of plastic. And also, when you're 3D printing, you need support. So you can print, you know, for example, the gun. You'll basically put like a um, piece of plastic here that you can like peel off and break off. So that uses up quite a bit of plastic, but still, that's much better than just, I think, making a mold of this because it's so much more cost effective. If, even if you use one entire spool to do this, that's $20 in a spool. You can get the spools of plastic for like $17. And to me, that's kind of worth it. You know, this is not even a finished uh, project, but I think this is a good way to go about it if you don't have that much money to spend on molds. But that's pretty much it. The next videos I'm going to show you guys are the printouts of these. So stay tuned for that. And thank you for watching and I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video.